Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'll be talking to you about the principle of constraint. So, uh, who likes talking about rules? No? Nobody? Oh, well, sucks to be you then, because constraint is one of many rules or principles of design. Constraint is when blah blah rules blah. Basically, it prohibits certain actions and stops you from doing stuff. Kinda like this stick up my bur. Oh, back. Um. Uh, oh. Really though, it prevents the user from interacting with the design in a way that's not intended. There are two types of design constraint. Count them. Two. Being psychological and physical constraint. A physical constraint, for example, could be a barrier, like iron bars, or this brick wall. Dude, stop it. Another physical constraint is in that volume dial on the speaker that you're reaching for, to turn me down. Don't think I don't see you, and your weird, fleshy hand. Ew. It uses an axis with a set beginning and end point to prevent it from turning all the way around. Psychological constraints, however, could be things like the signs on toilet doors. Do to learn some about meanings, the lady sign is kind of like saying, Come on now, gentlemen, this one's not for you. I mean it, Steve. Without constraint, who knows what would happen? Take this cool box, whose lever can move any which way. No constraint at all. For really? <laughs> oh god, no! This, my friends, is an example of bad design due to not having any physical constraints helping to explain how and how not to use the design. As I said earlier, constraints help design and they prevent the user from interacting with the design in a way that's not intended, limiting potential errors and helping with the usability of a design. I do hope you've all learned something, because that's two minutes you'll never get back. Toodaloo!